In this course, we are going to be covering database migrations inside of Slim3 using Finks. Now, if you aren't too sure what database migrations are, we're going to go ahead and talk about that when we look at the demo. I'm going to explain the benefits of this because there are huge benefits as long as you get into the flow of writing database migrations. Uh, so we'll speak about that in a moment. So this is a framework agnostic library. It doesn't matter where you go ahead and place this. You can use it outside of a framework if you want. In fact, when you finish this course, if you are no longer using Slim3 or you want to put this into a project without a framework, then it's going to work pretty much in exactly the same way. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example application and we're going to see how this is going to help us along the way. So first of all, I have just a very simple application set up. If I just head over to this page here, uh, what I'm trying to do is over in a controller. So if we just head over to this home controller, I am dumping out a user with an ID of one and grabbing their name. And I have a user model just over here. And I happen to be using Eloquent uh, from Laravel inside of Slim at this point. But again, it doesn't matter which kind of database wrapper you're using. So what we want to do is start to think about our users table because at the moment we don't have one. Well, we could go ahead and create this manually or we could pop over to the command line and we could use Finks to create a migration. So let's go ahead and create a create users table migration and we'll see how this works. So this has created us our first database migration. If we head over to this database folder here over to migrations, you can see that we have a uh, just some scaffolding that I set up, but you can customize this uh, and I'll be showing you how to do that as well. So in this case, what I want to do is get rid of this because I want to create a table. And in this instance, we're using Laravel's schema builder because it's a lot nicer than running raw SQL queries. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of this as well. So an up migration will go ahead and either create, add to, or delete anything from your uh, database. It's basically what happens when you run your migrations. And down will go ahead and reverse whatever change you've made inside of up. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and create a users table. But if we want to roll back our migrations, we're going to go ahead and get rid of the table. And we'll look at some more examples of this later when we add columns to our database table as well. So from here, what we can do within code is think about how we want to uh, structure our table. So we go ahead and use this table instance here. And first of all, I want an auto incrementing ID on my table. The next thing I probably want is some kind of email address. So I want this to be a string and I want to go ahead and provide email in there. And maybe I want some timestamps. So when this uh, particular record was created or updated. So this is pretty much as simple as it gets. Of course, there's a lot more that we could do here and we will be looking at examples here, but let's go ahead and migrate our changes and see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and run Finks migrate and that will go ahead. And if we head over to our database and give this a refresh, you'll see that we have a user's table with them columns that we specified. Now, if I later on realize, oh, actually, I want to go ahead and add a username to my table, I don't modify my existing migration. I can do, I can go ahead and roll the changes back, which will drop the user's table and then go and add that column. But it's a lot easier and a lot safer if you do have existing data inside of your database table to just create a new migration. You can basically think of this as the history of what you're making changes to in your database. And then when you move this over to a server or you move it over to a new machine, you can just go and run your migrations and everything will be created in the order that you specified. So let's go ahead and use Finks here to create a new migration. And I'm gonna call this add username to users table and the names here don't matter whatsoever. So let's come over. That's created a new migration for us. And what we can do here is instead use schema table to modify this and we can use schema table to roll back the changes. So we want to modify the users table and on the down migration, we want to modify the users table as well. So the modification I want to make is I want to add a string with a username in here and we can go ahead and change this on the down migration. So we want to drop that column if we want to roll these changes back. So now all I do is head over to my terminal and I run migrate again, and that will go ahead and sure enough, create that username for us. Now, if I want to roll these changes back, I can go ahead and use rollback and that will roll back my last migration. So if we head over, you can see the following. And in this case, you would probably roll back if you made a mistake here. Maybe you meant to make the username a unique value. Well, you can go ahead and change that and then re-migrate and that will migrate your latest migration. And there we go, that's back again. And if we just head over to the structure, you can see that is in fact unique. 
So if you've been working with migrations in the past, this will be pretty obvious to you. But if you are new to migrations, this can take a little bit of time to get into the habit of doing. But the benefit here is that once we move our project over to a new server, like I said, or a new machine, all we need to do when we start this up is probably run a composer install to install of our dependencies. And then we just use Finks in here to run migrate and that will create our entire database schema along with any additions, removals or any other changes that we've made. So we're going to be covering integrating this into Slim 3. We're going to make it as nice as possible, as clean as possible, just so it's very easy to use and you can improve your workflow with the use of migrations.